katika jina la mwanao Yesu Kristo tunakuabudu na tunakushukuru asubuhi ya leo ni kwa sababu ya wingi wa neema na rehema zako tunakushukuru ni kwa sababu wakati umefika na ili tuketi tukalisikize neno lako tunaomba Mungu ukafungue nafsi zetu na mioyo yetu ikapate mahali mwafaka ambapo neno lako litaketi na lile linatujenga linatukosoa na linatuelekeza kulingana na mapenzi yako pokea sifa utukufu na heshima na ni katika jina lako Yesu Kristo tumeomba na tumeshukuru amen bwana asifiwe haleluya Asubuhi ya leo na shukuru Mungu ni kwa sababu ya nafasi jema ambayo amenipa kwa sababu ya uhai na kwa sababu ya afya jema na mshukuru Mungu na shukuru Mungu pia ni kwa sababu ya uongozi wa kanisa kwa sababu ya kunipa nafasi ya kunena neno la Mungu na pia na shukuru Mungu ni kwa sababu yenu kwa sababu kama vile Daudi alisema ya kwamba nilifurahi wakati waliniambia twende katika nyumba ya Bwana ulifanya jabo busala kuja katika nyumba ya Bwana. Kwa majina naitwa Miriam Derito, nimeokoka Yesu ni Bwana. Niko na salamu zenu kutoka PCA Chaani. Asande nilikuwa mahali pale na kama kuna kitu nilifurahia. Ushawahi sikia kuitanishwa na kitu chema? Wakati nilikuwa mahali pale nilifurahi kuitanishwa na kanisa la PCA Baburi. Kwa sababu mahali pale kila mtu alikuwa anasema PCA ni, Baburi ni kanisa mzuri sana. Mimi nalipenda lile kanisa na mimi pia nikasikia pale na ringa kwa sababu naitanishwa na kanisa ambalo lina sifa jema. Kwa hivyo Mungu wa ajabu awabariki wa sana. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, siku ya leo tunataka kuongea kuhusu restored by his love. Uh, na tumesomewa masomo katika Hosea moja mstari wa nane mpaka moja tukasomewa Waefeso tatu kuanzia nne uh, mpaka tisa na neno letu la kuinua mioyo lilikuwa Yelemaya na moja kwa uh, hapo mstari wa tatu na nilipokuwa nikisoma na nilipokuwa nikisoma haya maandiko yote haya maandiko yote they were all talking about the children of Israel na nikatamani sana kujua zaidi kuhusu historia ya wana wa Israeli. Na nilipokuwa nasoma nikaona wana wa Israeli ni taifa ambalo Mungu yeye mwenyewe alilipenda sana. Na tunamuona ilifika mahali wakati Mungu alimteua Daudi kuwa mfalme wa Israeli. There are so many promises ambazo Mungu alimfanyia Daudi. Na alipokuwa anampa zile promises The prom, one of the greatest promises that God gave to David alimwambia ya kwamba wafalme wote ambao wataliongoza taifa ya Israeli watakuwa wametoka katika nyumba yako that all the kings that were to reign in the uh, in Israel in future were to come in the house of David na pia akamwambia ni kupitia wewe ambao uh, ambao kutapata kujengwa kanisa katika uh, taifa la Israeli na tunaona Mungu akitimiza yale ahandi abazo alikuwa nazo amemwambia Daudi. Lakini what excite me most is when God told David, it is through you that all the kings that shall reign in Israel watatoka katika kwako. Na nilikuwa nafuata all the kings that reigned in Israel, nikajua ya kwamba it is through David that King Jesus Christ wa was born na ili sisi tukapata kukobolewa Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Yaani ni kupitia Daudi na uzao wake tulimpata Yesu Kristo. And that was the greatest a promise that God gave to David about Israel. Lakini tukisoma tunaona ya kwamba vile Mungu alivyolipenda hili taifa ilifika mahali the, uh, the children of Israel in a way they took uh, advantage of how God loved them. Yaani walifika mahali wakamzoea Mungu, wakazoea upendo ambao Mungu alikuwa anawapenda na nao. Na tunaona during the reign of King Zedekiah, Mungu anagadhabishwa sana na wana wa Israeli. Ni kwa sababu sasa walikuwa wamepotoka na walikuwa wametenda dhambi kuzidi Sodoma na Gomora. Na Mungu akawa ana hasira kuu sana kuhusu wana wa Israeli. And what happened? God gave the children of Israel in the hands of the enemy and they served in exile for 70 years. Bwana apewe sifa. 
And then I was trying to imagine yeye Mungu mwenyewe he was so angry and so bitter by what the children of Israel had done to a point amefikiria he will discipline them and he gave them over in the hands of the enemy. And I was thinking wakati mwingine tunazoea upendo wa Mungu na even when God punishes us we still can't remember how God loved us. Bwana apewe sifa. Na kwa hivyo ikawa nafikiria what is restoration? You know, I was looking at urejesho for you to restore something it must have been in ruins. You cannot restore something that is not destroyed. Hauwezi rekebisha ama rejesha kitu ambacho ni mpya. Unarejeshanga kitu ambacho kimepotea ama kimeharibika. And if you look at the English dictionary, the the meaning of the word restore it is to repair or to bring back to the original condition. Ni kitu ambacho kimeharibika ambacho kinarudishwa katika in its uh, uh, in its uh, initial condition. So for lands to be restored ni kumaanisha kwamba tumepotea na tumeharibika. We are in a certain sort of ruins and God himself he wants to repair us back and bring us back to his love. Bwana apewe sifa. Na kwa hivyo katika Yeremia Jeremiah the prophet was talking about the children of Israel. And apparently wakati Jeremiah alikuwa anaongea in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and Jeremiah chapter 31 alikuwa anaongea when these children of Israel were already in exile. Naye Mungu alikuwa anamwambia Jeremiah katika Jeremiah the Ravini and chapter 1 I mean that in verses 1 and God was telling Jeremiah Write down in a book everything that I will tell you because a time is coming when I will restore my people of Israel Judah and I will, br- I will bring them back in the land that I gave their ancestors na kuamrisha wadike mahali ya kwa maneno ambayo mimi nitakuamrisha huyo ni Mungu anamwambia Yeremia kwa sababu itafika mahali ambapo mimi nitarejesha Israeli katika uh, katika a, a lad ambao mimi nilikuwa nimewapa and he says that in, in verses 8 he continues to say na wakati huo utakapofika i will break the yoke that is around their neck and remove their chains and they will no longer be the slaves of fallen instead they will serve me the lord their god and descendants of david whom i will enthrone as a king at wakati huo utakapofika mimi mwenyewe nitawafungua minyololo ambayo wamefungwa nayo. Nitawatoa katika mateka ambayo wametekwa in the land of the foreigners. Huo ni Mungu alikuwa anamwambia Yeremia. Wakati huo ukifika, mimi Mungu nitawatoa katika uh, uh, katika mateka. Nitawaondoa katika uchungu na mateso ambao wanapitia mikononi mwa the foreigners. And therefore Jeremia Jeremiah was trying to bring up the picture of how much God loved Israel. But again, God had to make sure that he punishes Israel because he loved them. Bwana apewe sifa. Pengine kama Mungu hangepeleka hawa watoto wake katika the land, you know, if you look at it critically, when King Nebuchadnezzar was the uh, was, was the king in Babylon, wakati huo katika Babylon hakuna mtu aliyekuwa anamwabudu Mungu wale watu walikuwa wanaabudu miungu yale mambo ambayo yalikuwa yanatendeka pale katika Babylon yalikuwa mambo yalikuwa ya uchungu sana lakini ukiangalia waisraeli katika Jerusalem Juda hili ni taifa ambalo lilikuwa Mungu ameliinua na wafalme ambao walikuwa wamepita pale ni wafalme ambao walikuwa wanamuogopa Mungu. Kwa hivyo hili ni na ukisoma even if you read in the book of uh, Hosea chapter 1 utaona vile Mungu anasema ati Israeli ilikuwa kama taifa langu ilikuwa ni kama mtoto wangu ambaye mimi niliyemnyakua kati kutoka Egypt kutoka Misri. Kwa hivyo ni watu ambao walikuwa wanajua jinsi ya kumshukuru Mungu, jinsi ya kumwabudu Mungu. Israelite was a god chosen city. But look at what they are doing during the uh, the reign of uh, uh, King Zedekiah. 
Mungu anajaribu kutuma his prophets ya kwamba nenda uambie wale wana wa Israeli waachane na dhabi. Waache kufanya vile mataifa mengine kama Babylon wanafanya. And those people could not reason at all. The more God sent the, uh, the his prophets to go and tell them acha neni na dhabi, the more they continued sinning. And you know what God to, did to them? God destroyed that city in one day. Taifa ambalo alilolipenda, watu ambao waliokuwa wanamjua Mungu. Remember these people they knew God. Na ukisoma vizuri in the book of um, in, in the book of uh, 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 Jeremiah mahali ambapo tumesoma 31 wao wenyewe wanasema tulijua sauti ya Mungu kwa sababu alikuwa amezoea kunena nasi. Kwa hivyo Waisraeli walikuwa wanaelewa sana sauti ya Mungu. Walikuwa wanaelewa sana uh, sheria za Mungu. But when they could not reason to God, he destroyed them in only one day. Alifanya wa Babiloni watu ambao hawakuwa wanamjua Mungu taifa ambalo Mungu hakuwa anashughulika nalo watu ambao walikuwa wameingia katika dhambi na wamekita mikiki katika dhambi watu ambao walikuwa wanainua miungu hao ndio alipatia uwezo wa kukuja kuvuja vuja kuta ambazo zilikuwa zimeinuliwa za dhahabu katika Israeli and remember in Israel dipo king solomon alikuwa amejenga kanisa ambalo lilikuwa tamu sana kanisa ambalo lilikuwa la dhahabu kanisa ambalo lilikuwa it was the greatest temple that had ever been built in Israel na Mungu hakutabua hayo yote hakutabua ya kwamba alikuwa ameabia Daudi kupitia mwanako mwanao Sulaimani patajengwa kanisa mahali pale hakutabua when his anger was with Israel he made the Babylonians to come wakavuja vuja lile kuta wakaingia kule ndani wakachoma majuba wakachoma watu wakafukuza kila mtu and they got hold of the israelites wakashikwa mateka miaka sabini in babylon bwana apewe sifa so it doesn't matter how many years you know god it doesn't matter how much you know the bible it does if you don't obey the lord atakupeana mikononi mwa mataifa ambayo hayamjui mungu ukasavu huko kama in exile bwana apewe sifa na wakati mwingine nilikuwa najiuliza kwa nini wakati mwingine tunateseka mikononi mwa wale ambao hawamjui mungu I was going back in my life and I was asking myself wakati mimi ninateseka mikononi wa watu ambao hawamjui mungu ni kwa sababu ya nini ni kwa sababu nimekubali ghadhabu ya Mungu juu yangu ifike kiasi ya kwamba amenipeana mikononi mwa watenda dhabi watu ambao hawamjui Mungu ili hali mimi ninajua Mungu wangu Bwana apewe sifa and this is what was happening to Israel na sasa wamefika pale mikononi mwa watu ambao hawakuwa wanamjua Mungu Babylon in exile for 70 years they suffered pain they died there na Mungu anaangalia lile taifa lake anasema wale ni watu ambao ninawapenda sana. Lakini anawaambia vipi? In the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 15. Because of your guilt, uh, because of your great guilt and many sins I have done these things. Ni kwa sababu ya dhambi zenu nyingi sana nimefanya hivi ambalo nimefanya. Nimewapeana mkawa mateka. Bwana apewe sifa. And therefore In the book of Hosea, Biblia inaleta Hosea was bringing a very good picture. It's an image of a father who loved his children but the children have rejected him. Ni picha mzuri sana Hosea anatuletea ya watu ambao baba yao alikuwa anawapenda sana lakini watoto hawakuwa hawakuwa wanapendeka. Bwana apewe sifa taifa ambalo lilikuwa limependwa sana na Mungu lakini halipendeki. Na diposa unaona Hosea mahali ambapo tumeso, tumesomewa uh, Biblia, ina, uh, Biblia inasema ya kwamba nitawezaje tena kuendelea ghadhabu yangu dhidi yenu wewe Ephraim. Nitaendeleaje ghadhabu yangu kuwa juu yako ama nitakusahau aje wewe Yerusalemu. How will I give up on you Israel? Now when I was thinking about restoration I'm looking at these children even after kumgadhabisha Mungu sana 
na hata baada ya kuto ya kuto hata come in back to senses even when god was setting the prophets god still have so much love for them na pia mungu inafika mahali anakuwa in a way he became like he was so emotional about the love he had for them na inafika mahali anasema in the book of hosea though my bible is a bit paraphrased a biblia inasema how can i give up on you israel how can i abandon you could i ever destroy you as i did adma and treat you as i did zeboim if you look at it adma and zeboim zilikuwa ni setes ambazo zilikuwa karibu na sodom and gomora na wakati mungu alifika ni wakati wake wa ku destroy sodom and gomora the two setes they were also destroyed together na hapa mungu anasemaje mimi nitatoa wapi nguvu ya kukumaliza tena wewe Israeli nitawezaje tena mimi ku destroy a city that i had loved so much and remember these people had died a lot during the capture they died in babylon they also died and what is god trying to say that i will remain with the remnants na ili the promise that i gave to david iendele wana apewa sifa lazima nitakuwa na mabaki yangu ambayo nitaleta katika Jerusalemu Juda na niwaregeshe tena katika upendo wangu na ili ahadi niliyopewa Daudi likatimie bwana apewe sifa haleluya and therefore god was angry with his own children but he had so much sympathy amidst the chastening hata kama kuwa mungu alikuwa anataka kuwa 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 punish sijui kwa Kiswahili nitasemaje hata kama Mungu alikuwa anataka kuwa punish he still had so much sympathy for what that city had gone through bwana apewe sifa na nilikuwa ninaona it hurt god so much when he has to punish someone he loves inamgadhabu Mungu sana ama inamfanya Mungu asikie uchungu mwingi sana wakati he has to punish you that someone that he really loves wewe ambao unajua ukweli, wewe ambao umepandika katika begu ya Ukristo, it hurts him so much to imagine that he has to punish you. But again, he has to punish you because he cannot assume sin. Bwana apewe sifa. Wakati mwingine lakini lazima Mungu atatufinya kwa sababu hata achilia dhabi lijitukuze. Bwana apewe sifa. He will not allow wickedness because he cannot ignore sin. And therefore we see that in his justice there is a lot of mercy. If there is someone who is so just is our God that even though he loved this city na akaipeana katika mikononi mwa wa mateka katika mikononi mwa adui he still loved them so much meaning within his justice he has a lot of mercy. Sisi we are so much sinifu yani sisi ni watenda dhambi na wakati mwingine Mungu akituangalia anaona we, dis, we, we deserve punishment but because of the so much love that he has for us he still restores and reminds us that we need to come back to him bwana apewe sifa the vast majority of Israel was terminated Remember wale watu ambao walikufa walikuwa wengi. Lakini ili Mungu ajitukuze alikuwa ni lazima akuwe na mabaki yake. Bwana apewe sifa. But the good news is that God is both just and he is also a justifier. Hallelujah. Our God is very just. But above all, he is a justifier. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 13 It was on the cross that God paid the penalty of sin and satisfied his own justice. Hallelujah. That it was on the cross that he had to shed the blood of his only beloved son because of a nation that had rejected him. And therefore he had to justify his justice. Hallelujah. Ilikuwa ni kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu. Lakini kwa sababu Mungu alitaka kutulejesha he had to sacrifice his only son to die on the cross so that he could justify his justice. Bwana apewe sifa. 
Lazima Mungu age justify his justice that he had to bring us back in his love. Regardless of whatever we had done, he had to bring us back in his love. And therefore, we are learning that our God is just. Our God is compassionate and our God is merciful. It took him mercy to restore back the children of Israel. It took him compassion that no man could have done to bring back the children of Israel. And I was looking at the nature of man. Man cannot forgive if they are not if forgiveness have not been seeked from them. Mimi nikikosea siku ya leo, itabini mimi mama promise nije niombe msamaha na ili unisamehe na ili na wakati mwingine hata tukisamehe hatusahau. There is no man who could forgive the children of Israel akikumbuka ya kwamba hawa niliwatoa katika nchi ya utumwa Misri mimi mwenyewe nikawaleta nimekuwa Mungu wao na wamekuwa Mungu wangu na sasa wameni wamenikataa No man would have done what God did Siku hii mimi nikikusaidia kama mama promise nikusaidie nisimame na wewe Hile siku you will betray me because of my nature as a man I will not be able to give forgive you easily And wakati mwingine the reason why most of us we have enmity with even people we don't know it is because we cannot forgive them until they seek forgiveness from us But this is not the nature of God Regardless of how many times God alibebeleza wana wa Israeli akawatumania akawatumania akaita Jeremiah akamwambia nenda ukawaabie akamwambia nenda kwa mfalme Zedekiah muambie aambie watu wake waache kuni waache kunifanya dhabi lakini they could hear none of those Mungu anawapeana mikononi mwa mateka but where he was seated in his throne he is like I love that is, uh, I love Israel so much na wakati nitakapo panga kuarejesha anamwambia uh, Jeremiah andika maneno hayo ambayo nitakayokupa ya kwamba hili taifa langu siku moja nitairejesha na wakati nitairejesha nitawapenda mimi na upendo ambao hakuna mwanadamu amewapenda nayo bwana apewe sifa so sometimes we stray and we go far away from god wakati mwingine tunamuondokea mungu na tunaenda bali sana wakati mwingine wanadamu wanatuhukumu wakati mwingine wanadamu hawawezi wakatupa ule upendo lakini Mungu aketuangalia anaona ya kwamba lile ni taifa ambalo ninalipenda na ni lazima nitalilegesha. Bwana apewe sifa. And you know you cannot bring back someone who is not willing to be brought. Leo hii ukishikwa mateka upelekwe Tanzania or any other country ushikwe mateka kule. Sisi kama kanisa tutamani kukukujia ukiwa mahali pale ukatae Hakuna jambo tunaweza fanya si ni kweli You must be willing to be restored And therefore the message today is are we willing to be restored by love because it is not about us because if it was about us our justice is to be punished kwa sababu tumetenda dhambi Biblia inasema ya kwamba kwa maana tumetenda dhambi we have all sinned and we have fallen short of his glory kwa hivyo when God looked at us his justice is to punish us but today he's he's calling are you ready to be restored back in his love are you ready to be restored back in his sympathy are you ready to be restored back in his mercies and this is what Paul is saying in the book of Ephesians mahali ambapo tumesema Paulo ni mtu ambao alikuwa ametembea na Mungu to a point he had understood who he was before God. Paulo alikuwa anajua his identity. Na unaona pale Biblia inasema God said I will be their God and they will be my people. Why? God was giving Israel a new identity. Alikuwa anataka wajue whom they are in his heart he was giving them an identity na paulo ni mtu ambaye alikuwa anajua 
who he was and therefore Paul knew his identity. Na kwa hivyo Paulo katika kitabu cha Ephesians chapter 3 pale 14 Paulo anasema for this reason I fall on my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth receive its true name. Why Paul knew that every family that knows Christ has an identity in Christ. Bwana apewe sifa. Na diposa anasema for this reason I fall on my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its name. It is only in heaven that we receive a name, we receive an identity. Bwana apewe sifa. Ni only in heaven that we can receive our identity. And for therefore he's saying um I, as God from um from whom every family in heaven and on earth receive its true identity I as God from uh, from wealth of his glory to give you power through his spirit to be strong in your inner cells so one ambao anaandika Paul was making a request to God that we may be strengthened with power Paulo alikujua ya kwamba for last to be restored back we have to be strengthened within us we have to have power that will give us dominion to understand our identity in the kingdom bwana apewe sifa for you to be able to be restored back you need the strength that is able, that gives you ability to dominate hallelujah You cannot dominate if you don't have the strength. Number two, you cannot dominate if you don't know your identity. Bwana apewe sifa. Ama leo unaweza enda uchukue ile ploti iko pale kando na useme ni yako. Can you do that? You first of all need to have the title deed that bears your name. That one gives you an identity. That gives that plot an identity. Number two, wakati uko na kile cheti, you have now the strength within you that gives you the dominion. Ya kwamba ukienda pale kwa lile kwa hiyo plot, you are able to say this is mine. And therefore, during our restoration, Paul is saying, I am kneeling down before the Father in whom every family in this world and on heaven is given an identity. Na ninawaombea ya kwamba mioyo yenu ipate nguvu ya kuweza kumiliki. Bwana apewe sifa. Wale wana wa Israeli atakana kwamba wangetolewa katika mateka, walijishwe katika nchi yao if God would not have given them the authority, the dominion, the identity bado wageshindwa. Bwana apewe sifa. Na diposa ne, uh, Nehemiah akiwa mahali pale Ah, walipokuwa wanainua ukuta. Sasa wametoka utumwani wamerudi katika nchi yao. Wamekuta the city was completely destroyed. And now they are trying to rebuild back the city. They were trying to rebuild back the city. Na walipokuwa pale wakiinua the city, you remember the discouragement they had. And Nehemiah anawaambia msijali the, the, the msijali God is our father and his strength will drive us. Bwana apewe sifa. Kwa sababu Nehemiah alijua hawa watu they needed the strength for them to have a dominion over what God has given them. So during our process of restoration we must have the strength. Paulo anatuombea ya kwamba tupate nguvu ya kujua ya kwamba we have an identity in Christ. And when you know that you have an identity in Christ, you will dominate. Bwana apewe sifa. Number two, he says, I am kneeling and praying that we may grasp the extent of God's love. The Bible says in verse 17 that I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love. When I was thinking about a foundation, nilifikiria kuhusu hili kanisa. Hili kanisa chini yake lazima kuna foundation, si ndio? ama katika yale majuba ambayo yamejengwa marefu sana si kuna foundation kule chini and you realize the greatest work ambao nilikuwa nasikia na wajenzi kazi nyingi sana kwa nyumba inakuanga katika pale foundation bwana apewe sifa kazi nyingi sana kwa pale kwa foundation na mwisho kwa during the finishing 
So the foundation of a house is very important. And how you finish your house is also very important. Waweza jenga jumba ambalo liko na foundation strong. Lakini ukiliacha kama halija kuwa finished well, nobody will like that house. And therefore this is what Paul is praying. That we might grasp the extent of the love that God has for us. That even when we were too much sinful, he was still willing to restore us back to him. And when we understand how deep, how wide, how far the love of God is to us, we will understand how much our God loves us. And my question today, this morning, how deep, how wide, how far are you able to stretch the love that God has for you? Paul request was that we might be able to grasp how wide, how long, how deep, and how high the love of God was for us. And number three, Paul was praying that we may be filled with God. And I was imagining, if you were to take a cup, wanza kuweka maji, sili ile kikombe itaja, after imeja itakuwa nini, it will start overflowing, sindio? If we put a bucket of water here, Tuanza kuweka maji. Ile bucket ijaye. Si ita overflow. If nobody stops putting that water in that bucket. Si tutakuta yu maji imefika kule muisho. And if nothing is done. Ukikuja hapa after three days. The whole of this compound itakuwa ni kama bahali yama ni kama muto. Sindio? And this is what Paul is saying. That we may be full of God. That we may be, fi be filled with God. You know. When you will allow your life to be filled of God, you will so have much a lot of God that what overflows out of you is God himself. So how full are you? How full are you of God? How much of the love of God fills you? How much of the love of God is full in me? Mimi nimejazwa vipi na upendo wa Mungu? Mimi nimejazwa vipi na Mungu mwenyewe? How do you treat people around you? Do you extend God to them? Do you extend the excess love that God gives you to them? How do you show love to them? If you are full, it is because you are overflowing the goodness and the relationships allowed you benefit from the God that is full in you. Bona Persifa. This is not magic. If you are full of so much kindness, your kindness overflows and everybody around you will enjoy the masses and the, the goodness in you. If you are so much full of hate, what overflows out of you is hate and everybody around you will just get it from you. And this is what Paul is praying. That we may be so much full of God. That we might be able to overflow God in us. Bwana apewe sifa. Atakama kwamba. Wakati mwingine. We adago the chastening of God. We adago the correction of God so painfully. When God bring us back. May we be filled with so much love. That the same, same love will overflow. And therefore, as believers, we have been created to be containers of God. Kazi yako ni kukua tu a container. God wants to fill you with his goodness. God wants to fill you with his love. He wants to fill you with his masses. He wants to fill you with so much goodness that you might radiate the same, same goodness in you. He desires to pour his life into ours. He desires that he may put his life in ours. Anatamani sana. Ya kwamba tunaweza kuwa containers ambazo zinaweza jazwa na yeye mwenyewe ya kwamba sisi tukapate kitu ya kupatia wengine. Bwana apewe sifa. And today, this morning, I just came to tell you that for last to be restored, one, we must be willing. Number two, for last to be restored, we must understand that we are ruined, we are broken, we are destroyed, and therefore we need to be rebuilt back. 
sisi ni watu mwibaji akasema sio kwa sababu ya mazuri ambayo nimekutenda lakini nitumie mimi kitu bure kwa nini akasema hivyo ni kwa sababu alijua he she was in ruins you understand ya kwamba mimi ni mtu ambaye amevuja vujwa na ulimwengu mimi ni mtu ambayo i have been ruined by sin mimi ni mtu ambayo si stahili when we understand that therefore we shall be ready to be restored bwana apea sifa and this is my prayer today during restoration are you ready to be brought back hallelujah bwana apea sifa are you ready to be brought back are you ready to know your identity paul is saying that i am kneeling down to the father in heaven where every family in heaven and on earth receives its name when you understand that it is only in heaven that you will understand your own identity you will be brought back to restoration bwana apea sifa na kwa hivyo kabla hatujaingia katika in the in, in the season of thanksgiving manake tunaelekea mwezi ambao ni mwezi wa kushukuru Mungu kwa yale yote ametenda kwa yale yote na pia kwa sababu ya kutupa Yesu Kristo ambaye atazaliwa kwa sababu yetu but before then i want us to go before the lord and tell god maybe mimi Mungu sikujua ya kwamba ni kwa sababu ya dhambi zangu ulinipeana mikononi mwa mataifa Sikujua ni kwa sababu ya dhambi zangu ulinipeana mikononi mwa wenye dhambi. Sometimes we find ourselves suffering in the hands of the sinners. And therefore it is time to tell God, I have understood how broken I am, how ruined I am, how destroyed I am, and I want you to bring me back to your love. You see God is asking How can I give up on you Israel? And this is what God is asking today in the morning. How can I be able to give up on you? He is not going to give up on you. The Bible says in the book of Hosea hapo ambapo tumesoma ya kwamba he says I will not allow my anger to be upon Israel again. And for him to justify that he said because I am God I am not like any human. Bona apewe sifa. Therefore meaning that our God is merciful. Our God is the only true friend. He is the only person who can ask show us mercy when nobody else can give us the same mercy. Bwana apea sifa. Na kwa hivyo ndipo sasa nilikuwa nina hii naiba hii wimbo ninasema ya kwamba ninasema ya kwamba linalozidi yote ni asifiwe mwokozi ndani yetu. Asifiwe mwokozi na lisifiwe kabuli lakini linalozidi yote ni asifiwe mwokozi. Mwana apewe sifa. Asifiwe Mungu ambaye anatupenda sana. And therefore, I want us to go before the Lord. I just want you to make a prayer. It is only you who understand how ruined you are, how destroyed you are, how broken you are, how far you have gone from God. It's only you who understand. But the voice today says God will not show his anger again upon you. He just want you to Just tell him I am ready. Niko tayari. Bring me back. Restore me back. Repair me O oh God. Build me again O oh God. Make me again O oh God for the glory and honor. Give me an identity. Because in you there is life. Wewe ni Mungu. Mpasu wa bahari. Hafananishi na kitu kingine Wewe ni Mungu mpasu wa bahari Hafananishi na kitu kingine Kitu kingine 
wa hasira wakati sisi tulikuondoka na tukakutenda dhambi haukukubali hasira yako ikawa juu yetu ulitupenda hata wakati ambapo sisi hatukupendeka ukamtoa mwana wako wa pekee Yesu Kristo afe na ili Mungu ukajidhihirisha jinsi vile ulivyotupenda ukatusamehe dhambi na ukatupatia nafasi ingine ya kujijua na kurejeshwa katika fadhili zako. Asubuhi ya leo tunasema ya kwamba wewe ni mwema na hakuna mwingine aliye kama wewe. Pokea sifa, utukufu na heshima. Turejeshe katika upendo wako. Tukakujue na tukakuelewe zaidi. Na katika jina la Baba, la Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu tumeomba na tumeamini. Amen. Amen.